All right, well, it's gonna be a day of eating. I have a, actually am doing a shoot tomorrow with Mikey. Um, we're gonna maintain the six feet social distance, but we gotta fucking, you know, we gotta do a shoot. Definitely gonna make sure I dial in the calories today. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing in isolation. I've actually gotten leaner. I've gotten leaner in isolation, focusing on body weight training and doing a lot more cooking. You know, perfecting the stove, stove top steak, potatoes. Like it's so much harder to get lean when you're eating out because you can make food a lot more filling and satisfying when you're controlling what you put in it. So let's get into it. I am 173 pounds today and the, uh, the lower ab veins are popping out. That's the key sign of leanness. All right, so we got a little delivery here today. I'm doing a um, little Starbucks. I've been enjoying their Americanos and um, their Rice crispy. their Cocoa Rice crispy squares are amazing. And you know what, I could make my own coffee, but you know, let's support the local um, Uber Eats drivers and, 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 and such. And now they, they hooked me up, uh, my friend Michaela Peterson, she, she's connected to local, true local. And they hooked me up with a full blown box of motherfucking New York strips. And I just put a post on my Instagram, you guys can check it out, about fasting. I've been doing fasting for literally almost 10 years. And I was talking about really how when I first started researching about it, fasting, went against everything I was told for, for a long time. The consensus was you gotta eat every few hours to keep your metabolism running. The first meal of the day, breakfast in the morning, is the most important meal to kickstart your day, kickstart your, your metabolism, feed your muscles, and that your body can only absorb 30 grams of protein um, per sitting. So this was the agenda. This was the agenda going on in the fitness industry. And I remember um, when I was like 18, I remember researching about fasting and realizing, oh my God, all these, these are all myths. The research goes flat against this. You can eat a big serving of protein. When you fast in the morning, you actually boost fat mobilization and growth hormone, you improve focus. Humans would not have made it this far in life if missing a meal would cause you to lose muscle and your energy levels to crash. Um, so since 2011, I've been fasting every day and it's like the only thing I've ever stuck to. I've tried tons of diets when I was younger, low carb, you know, eating every two to three hours. Fasting is the only thing I can really stick to because you can just eat steaks, drink nice coffee to blunt your appetite and sparkling water and eat pounds of potatoes. I wanna talk about the best way to set up your fasting diet. So what I find really works, but my favorite thing to do is, is put 50 to 60% of your daily calories for your big dinner feast. That's your huge feast. That's what's gonna, that's what's, it's gonna satisfy you like crazy. And then I break my fast with about 20 to 25% of my daily calories. So if you're doing 2000 calories, you know, you're looking at breaking your fast with, you know, 400 calories, 450, 500 max. Um, and then for your late night dessert or snack or late night meal, again, you do 20 to 25% calories uh, at night. I find that works the best. I'm um, doing two big meals a day. For me, it makes it a lot harder to lean down. So I like to do a light first meal. For me, it might be a collagen shake, a Rice Krispie Square banana, a big feast steak potatoes, and then my dessert at night, chocolate or a cheese quesadilla. So that's the best way. So if you're doing 2000 calories, you might do, you know, you might do 400 for your, to break your fast around one or two or later. You might do 1200 for your big dinner and then 400 for a little dessert. It's my, that's my favorite way to do it. If you're lean bulking, you do two big meals and a dessert, but just wanna give you that tip. I found my old green summer hat. Pretty fucking dope. Definitely a vibe, but I'm gonna break my fast now. It's about 5.15. I usually break my fast with a lighter meal, about four or 500 calories. That way I can, you know, and then my chocolate at night is usually 500. So I hit about a thousand calories in my first meal, my late night dessert, which gives me you know, the ability to eyeball that main meal to the tune of 1200 to 1400. So I always keep my first and last meal the same, which just keeps things automatic. And then if I go a little higher, a little lower on my big meal, it kind of just balances out. So I'm gonna be doing a Rice Krispie Square, which is 250 calories. I'm gonna get these vitamin D gummies, have 5,000 I use. For everyone that's staying in and isolating, you're not getting, you know, sunlight, you're not getting vitamin D. Vitamin D is really important for your immune system. So make sure to get your vitamin D. You know, 2,000 I use on the safe end if you wanna go higher. You know, I do about four or 5,000 I use. 
Um, and I'm gonna have my collagen protein shake. and have a scoop and a half in hot water with a little oat milk. So that'll be about 150 calories plus 250. We're looking at about 400 calories. So pretty, pretty good. So you might be thinking, Gregory, why are you doing vitamin D gummies like you're 10 years old? Just take the vitamin D drops. It's because this tastes so good, I never forget to take it. I never miss a day. Mmm. One. And. So I gotta give shouts out to Kino Basil. He helps us in the coaching groups and the Facebook groups. And he was the one that told me to do hot water with collagen with a splash of almond milk. Um, but you can also do oat milk. Oh my God, that's so good. This is the blueberry muffin flavor. It's about 150 calories. Cause I did a scoop and a half, maybe a little more than a scoop and a half, but with the oat milk, about 150, 160. 30 grams of protein. This collagen is good for your skin, joints, hair, nails. Now what we gotta do is we gotta take a big old bite of this. So this is how I break my fast. Sometimes I'll add a banana too. But I get, you know, the protein, 30 grams of protein from here. And then this is 250 calories. It's about 50 grams of carbs. That is so good. Mm. Mm. Some people get too obsessed with this fasting, you know, fasting, this doing this long fasting window. I just fast for the first four, six hours of the day. And I like to have that first light meal, four or 500 calories, because then, you know, when I eat my big feast at 7, 8 p.m., I go into the feast, you know, hungry, but not ravenous. If you push your fast too long, you're ravenous, then it becomes, you know, you deplete that willpower and then you end up kind of overeating. So don't overdo the fast. This small meal before the big feast really sets the stage for that consistency. Mm. Now I'm gonna be at 500 calories with the apple and it's like 7.30. Hey Grant, what does Gordon Ramsay say about taking steak out of the fridge? You gotta get the steak room temperature. You gotta, you gotta wait 20 minutes. We got these two bad boys. So I'm gonna be donating about half of one to Cairo. We got 500 grams of potatoes, and we're gonna mix it in a bowl with a tablespoon of oil and make potato wedges. So 30 minutes at 400. It's been a long week, so I can have a little Napa Valley. We got the potatoes in, crispening up, and about to throw on a couple steaks. Get some olive oil on the pan, let's go. Gordon Ramsay style. Look how beautiful this looks, oh my God. So we nailed the steak tonight, look at that. Nice medium, center medium. Perfection, I'm gonna eat probably one full one and a half. And I like to eat my steak first. And then I'll have my potatoes a little bit later. Extends the big feast, keeps me a little more satiated. So it's about 8.45, I'll probably have the potatoes around 9.30. And have a 9 p.m. meeting with my clothing manufacturer. We got Kirby enthusiasm over there. Let's try this steak. Oh my God. So I finished the steak in half. I'm gonna do two steaks today. So about pretty much 24 ounces of steak. I've been very, very, very lean, so I'm letting myself eat a bit more. So, 500 calories, 24 ounces of steak is like a thousand plus calories of steak, 1200. So now we're at 1700, I got 500 calories of potatoes, that's 2200. If I eat my chocolate, we're gonna be at 2800 calories. That's a little surplus, so might do that. Not to mention a little wine. Sometimes you just get so chiseled, you get to eat a bit more. So this is gonna be put me, you know, this is gonna bring me up to uh, about 2,100 calories. So very yummy. These taste delicious. Mm. So good. 
So it's 11 p.m. I'm feeling super satisfied. But I gotta go pick up some, uh, some sparkling water, some fruits and some snacks. So I'm gonna do that in a second. But yeah, this is an easy diet. All right, it's almost 2 a.m., you know. So, so far today I fasted. Um, I had the Rice Krispie Square collagen and apple, about 500 calories. Um, then I had my big feast, which was about 1,500. You know, a big portion of steak and potatoes. Um, that was 15, 1,600, so we'll call it 2,000. I had another apple, 2,100. And you know what? I'm still gonna finish off with some chocolate. Um, I had some wine, you know, but again, what I, I found that based on my, you know, experience, that I don't like to, um, if I have alcohol, I don't like to cut my calories down to make room for alcohol. I find if just having a couple glasses of wine or, you know, a couple old fashions or tequila, a couple tequila sodas, um, it's not gonna, not all three of those combined, that would be a little bit much. But if you're having just a few drinks and you're going with lower calorie options, it's not gonna hurt you that much. I find that um, alcohol doesn't really make too much of a difference as long as you're not binge drinking and as long as you're not doing high calorie drinks. Um, where people mess up with alcohol is they drink way too much or they drink like 10 beers or they end up you know, drinking a lot and then overdoing their calories. But if you stick to your calorie intake and you have a few drinks, it's not gonna make a huge deal. Sure, if you're trying to get ready for a competition, you might need to track it, but for general, like for leaning down, uh, for the most part, you don't need to. I've been loving this chocolate. I haven't been doing the green and blacks as much, but I've been doing the chocolate Swiss almond or hazelnut. Now this whole thing, it's like almost 600 calories. So 30 grams is 170. It's about, we'll call it 600. So if I have this tonight, I'm gonna be around 2,700 calories, not including the wine. And that's, you know, it's about my maintenance. That's about my maintenance level. But anyways, that's my day of eating. Again, you know, I kind of was like, you know, I probably should go closer to 23, 2400, but today, you know, I went a bit higher and I'm very flexible with that. Worst case scenario today, I hit maintenance. I'm around my maintenance level, maybe a slightly higher and then tomorrow I might go a bit lower, but it's okay. I mean, the goal is to stay fucking ripped year round. You don't want to always be in a deficit. It won't work. You'll flatten out, you'll lose muscle, your sex drive will fall apart. And if you're always in a deficit, eventually you're gonna wither away. So me, you know, staying ripped year round, I'll go, I'll, I'll ride a wave basically. It's like surfing, right? It's like surfing. Imagine you, and I, I don't even surf, but you can just imagine the analogy. You know, sometimes you're just, you're just waiting for that um, wave to hit you. When you're waiting for that wave to hit you, you're you know, eating around maintenance. You're eating around your body's needs. You're not quite as ripped, but you're just kind of maintaining a nice level. And then as, re as soon as that wave comes, you ride that wave and you know, you drop three, four pounds of fat and then boom, you step off. Again, the guys that try and always keep themselves in that deficit and they get extreme, strict, strict, strict. It's like building a building that has no flexibility. As soon as a strong wind hits it, you know, week after week, month after month, boom, the thing's gonna fall apart. But the other thing is, this is, so this, this is fitness, this is life in general. There's certain advice that is great for one person, but then for other people, you need to give them different advice. And so what I was talking about in my coaching group that fucking after I gave this video, after I told them this message, the fucking next two weeks, I, these clients were fucking killing it. They were just PRs, personal records, personal records, lowest weight. And it's the 5% tactic. Or the difference between fucking crushing your goals and being stuck and staying the same is that extra 5%, that just little extra 5% that stacks up day after day, week after week, month after month. Hope you guys found this super valuable. Again, these lessons we're teaching you, you know, it takes years and years and years and years of trial and error to figure this stuff out. So you guys have to understand how valuable this is gonna be for you. This is stuff that I had to fucking spend years fucking realizing that getting shredded is like fucking surfing. I don't even surf. I'm not gonna read this in a fitness book, so I just wanna blast you with that. And with all that said, motherfucker, I want you to be part of my movie star program. We got a Facebook group and everything. I'm active in there. We have people crushing it. You get a body weight workout, you get the 12 week, three phase gym workout, get shrink wrap. It's like the most complete thing you need. You gotta study this stuff. It's you learn everything you need to know to get to get ripped, to get fucking crazy shape in 12 weeks, to master body weight training. It's like a must have program. I want you to join it. So I'll put the link somewhere here. I mean, a lot of you probably already signed up. So if you're already signed up, fuck yeah. But um, if you're not, fucking join it. That's my story for you. Peace.